You're going to make a ton of mistakes, but if you fail forward and you're not afraid of learning from those mistakes and sometimes doing it in a very public way, um, I think that'll separate you from other people who are waiting to always be perfect. Yeah. So know your value, start messy, and don't be afraid to fail forward. Most of us know what we'll do if we fail, right? We'll go back to the job or, you know, I'm going to give this, you know, a year. And if it doesn't work, I'm going to go and do X, Y, and Z. But we don't plan for like, oh, if it really works, what are the possibilities? We should recognize that we're going to make mistakes. We don't yeah. have all the answers. But if you're willing to sit there and listen to one another, I think there's an opportunity for relationships. All opportunities that exist in the universe uh, exist currently in this moment. Meaning if, if, we, if we're buying into the laws of thermodynamics, which explain the foundational um, components of this universe and that uh, matter is not created, it just changes form, um, then all possibilities for creating the future exist currently in this moment. And it's our job as innovators, as entrepreneurs, to connect the dots to make sure that we can create the future. We teach entrepreneurship in the United States based upon one particular worldview, white, straight male. And uh, typically those people come from a position of privilege. And they are the ones who get most of the venture capital still. Things exactly. are getting better, but it's a slow process. Slow process. So the first thing we have to recognize is there are other ways to teach entrepreneurship. And um, we recognize that people of color, we have different learning styles and different cultural references and different cultural contexts. Sure. So we wanted to figure out a way that we can teach the nuances and the principles of entrepreneurship in a way that was uh, digestible to folks that traditionally have not been incorporated into those traditional entrepreneurial systems. What we wanted to do was to build bridges. Yeah. We wanted to find these entrepreneurs and train them and to build their, uh, their confidence in themselves while also working with those folks that were at the time decision makers, whether it's developers or whoever it might be, and to provide a bridge for those folks to work together to find common goals and common objectives. And the hope is that when this would happen, you have a more diverse, economically inclusive community. And I believe we're starting to see that in Over the Ride. How do you pass down the generational knowledge or behavior? Mm -hmm. We are designing healthcare, primary care in particular, uh, specifically designed for people of color in the United States. And so our goal is to address racial and ethnic health care disparities across the Latinx, Black American, South Asian, East Asian American communities in particular, um, but not exclusionary to any other groups, but we are very um, inclusive of these groups and, and uniquely designing experiences for them uh, with the hypothesis of uh, if we do so, we'll be able to address uh, significant health care disparities. All of us want Cincinnati to be the best possible place. And I think that most of us would agree that it's a better city if all of us can participate. Sometimes there's a disconnect between what an audience might expect from a person or a brand versus what we feel comfortable giving it. Now we have a, a particular focus on diversity and equity and inclusion um, of all girls and all women. And just make them have the opportunities to be exposed to STEM, to know that they can excel and advance in STEM, that you can be independent and just build that confidence in young girls so that the next generation of women in science, technology, engineering, and math, you know, don't face some of the same obstacles that me and my generation have. That's all you can do, right, is try, try to instill the next and invest in the next generation.